Hi, it's Alistair at Electric Scotland. Um, this video is, is going to be about our humour section. Uh, jokes, funny stories uh, uh, and stuff like that. I will say that in the menu you see H-U-M-O-R, which is actually the American spelling. Uh, in the UK and Canada, it's, it's spelled H-U-M-O-U-R. So, just thought I'd mention that in passing. Um, I feel we've got actually a very good humour section. Uh, bearing in mind that this is a history site, so I've got a lot of uh, interesting uh, humour books from, you know, like 1823 onwards. Um, and quite a bit of that shows that humour can be often current. In, in other words, we, we tend to look at the um, humour as in a period that we live in. So if you're looking at old humour, uh, some of the stories which were really funny back in those days probably maybe aren't funny today because we don't really understand uh, the kind of living situation as it is in those days. But uh, certainly I've read through uh, this in a considerable detail and I think there's a whole ton of great stuff in, in there. Um, I will say that uh, it's in two sections. Basically the top section is, is mostly books on Scottish humour. Um, whereas the bottom section below the horizontal line are all individual jokes and stories or wee collections that people have sent in to me over the years. So, um, it's basically, um, I mean, like, I've got a list of short jokes, you know, how many Englishmen does it take to batter down a castle gate? It says 10,000, 100 to hold, uh, hold the ram, and 9,900 to move the castle back and forth. I, I can't say that's particularly funny, but then collar to BT director inquiries, I want a knitwear company in Woven. Operator, Woven, are you sure? Call it, yes. That's what it says on the label, Woven in Scotland. <laughs> well, that's maybe a wee bit funnier. The little boy called uh, Jamie asks father, called Wallace, what will my name be when I grow up? Father said, Jamie, of course. Little Jamie said, do you mean to say I will have a little boy's name when I'm a grown-up man? <laughs> um, rudeness. Someone who keeps talking while you're trying to interrupt. <laughs> Lady at pedestrian crossing, waiting to cross the road, saw the uh, little green man and heard the audible sound so Julie crossed over to the other pavement. An American visitor asked what was the purpose of the audible sound. On being told it was for blind people, said, oh, we don't let them drive in America. <laughs> uh, Scots have an incurable cure for seasickness. They lean over the side of the ship with a 10 pence coin in their teeth. Ooh. In some Scottish restaurants they heat the knives so you can't use too much butter. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, McTavish broke the habit of a lifetime and bought two tickets for a raffle. One of his tickets won a £1,000 prize. He was asked how he felt about his big win. Disappointed, said McTavish. My other ticket didn't win anything. And so forth and so on. A, that, that's just a wee collection of uh, you know, wee jokes, basically, around the place. It's actually quite a big list when I look at it. 
Uh, should maybe number them rather than put a <laughs> a dot beside each one. Anyway, uh, I was just to show you that there's a, a whole lot. Uh, it's um, it's English made easy. For example, is another joke that we come across, which says, having chosen English as the preferred language in the EEC, now officially the European Union. Uh, or EU, the European Parliament has commissioned a feasibility study in ways of improving efficiency in communications between government departments. Uh, European officials have often pointed out that English spelling is unnecessarily difficult. For example, cough, plough, rough, through and thorough. That's all with GH at the end. What is clearly needed is a phased program of changes to iron out these anomalies. The program would, of course, be administered by a committee staff at top level by participating nations. In the first year, for example, the committee would suggest using S instead of the soft C. Certainly. And it goes on. I mean, I think you have to read that. Actually, I can't really, uh, <laughs> I can't really read it to you because it's obviously all these letters that keep changing. But um, yeah, so I mean, it's uh, what I think it's useful for there is if you're going to a Scottish event and you think you might need to tell a give a wee talk or something, and you want to put a bit of humour into it, it's quite nice to to go there and you know, look around the stories and see if you can find one there that's suitable. Um, and I think that's where the, the, the humour section can be very useful. But we've also got a whole ton of other stuff around. And, and basically on the top section, we've got check out Ranald's collection of sayings and verses. Now, Ranald McIntyre was a good friend of mine. Uh, he died a couple of years back now, um, but he'd been collecting uh, sayings and verses for many years, and uh, he decided that he would uh, donate them to the website. So when you click on Ranald's collection of uh, sayings and verses, you'll find that he's got um, wee things which says, Getting rid of full whiskey bottles is one story. A prayer, some one-liners, quotes and verses part one, quotes and verses part two, laughter, poems, uh, a sheet or a deep. Uh, animal care Christmas, uh, some new humour and all tickets ready please. And we've got a picture of Ranald there as well and uh, there's a wee page about Ranald, which gives you uh, a bit more about him. I will say Ranald's quite a character. He was one of the mechanics on the Curie Ricosse uh, team that won Le Mans two years running. So he was a very accomplished uh, mechanic for sure. Um, he later became an insurance investigator and uh, he had a very inquiring and analytical mind as well. And he was a great favourite of all the staff at my Almighty BBS, where, um, where I had a computer dealership in, in Scotland. He, we had a lot of young people working and he was a favourite of all of them and he used to look after them almost like a father in a sense. And he was great friends with my neighbours, uh, especially David Bolton on the other side of the hedge. They used to have a wee chat together and have a laugh and a joke, you know. And Ranald was the one that introduced having a buttered roll with a sausage roll inside it. Because he said that way you enjoyed the sausage roll, but all the wee flakes of pastry coming off it stayed in the roll, so it didn't mess up the tables and stuff. So, great guy, Ranald. And I think you might enjoy just browsing through that. We've got various other things like Scott's uh, humour and heroism. This is a 1902 book. Then we've got one, Scotch Wit and Humour, that's published around 1898. Got some old um, 
illustrations taken from the book Thistledown by Robert Ford. Uh, I'm not saying these are humour particularly, but they are very interesting. Um, in fact, you should really have a wee look at them. There, there's, there's certainly real characters there. Um, and it's kind of fun to look through it all. Some really good illustrations there as well. Say so the only problem with old books on wit and humour is that they don't translate very well to the humour of today. <coughs> <coughs> that said, these illustrations below are certainly worth looking at given the time period when they were created, which is around 1921. This being from the fourth edition of the book, which was first printed in a new and enlarged edition in 1913. Then we've got Humour of the Scot, that was another one. Then we've got Chick Murray. Chick Murray was a, a famous comedian in Scotland. In fact, he went down very well in England as well. But I've actually got two videos, uh, uh, clips of Chick. And there are others on YouTube you can you can actually look up, but I'll give you a bit of a history of him. Then the Laird of Logan, uh, speaking anecdotes and tales illustrated of the wit and humour of Scotland, edited by John Donald Carrick, author of The Life of William Wallace, got William Motherwell, author of Minstrelsy, Ancient and Modern, and Andrew Henderson, author of the Proverbs of Scotland. Then we've got Scotch Folk, Scotch Readings, 5th edition, Humorous and Amusing by Alexander G. Murdoch in 1895. We've got Mr. Punch's Scottish Humour and Mr. Punch in the Highlands. Yeah, it's from the Punch magazine. Uh, Scottish Jests and Anecdotes, collected by Robert Chambers in 1891. Uh, the Funny Story and Humorous Jest Book. Uh, the Popular Superstitions and Festive Amusements of the Highlanders of Scotland by W. Grant Stewart in 1823. Then we've got the new scrapbook and we've got the original scrapbook. Uh, it's a selection of the best jokes, puns, comic sayings, uh, Jonathanisms, etc., etc. Uh, then we have um, a fund of stories for Alistair McIntyre. This was actually from John Henderson. John had been collecting uh, interesting wee stories uh, and sayings um, from various sources, including the Glasgow Herald Diary. And uh, so he thought he would send them to me. And in, in a lot of the newsletters, I used to maybe put a wee one of his wee stories in there, in, in most of the newsletters, until I, I went through all, all of them, basically. So, I, again, a great store there. And then I got some videos. It's a collection of modern Scottish folk that are on YouTube. Um, there's, uh, if I remember rightly, there's uh, four women and two, three men uh, there, including myself, I might add. Um, but basically... Uh, it's quite nice to hear the Scottish accent, and the, the women are all very talented and very good. And the two guys are also very talented. Um, one of them is uh, into gaming big time, but he's also very popular on YouTube. I mean, he's got about 79k of visitors, so that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, the rest aren't way out there exciting, but I, I, frankly, I, uh, I, I think it's worth subscribing to them because uh, when they do come out with some good stuff, they're, they're, they're really interesting. So, anyway, uh, I just wanted to let you know that there is that, that section on the site and um, I think it opens up uh, the Scots a bit, which makes life kind of interesting. As it says in the title, humour pages from Electric Scotland, jokes, humour, uh, 
and humour in, in the English spelling, quotes and sayings contributed by members of the Electric Scotland web board and other sources. We hope you enjoy our special brand of humour. And I say feel free to email Alistair McIntyre if you'd like to contribute. Because in actual fact a lot of people have contributed and that's where this, the second section below the horizontal line on the page is, is most of those have been sent in by friends of the website. So you can contribute there if you've got any nice wee stories to tell. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to tell you about our humour section. Uh, I'm not sure how many people go there and have a look, but I think it's well worthwhile. Gives you a wee chuckle around the place. Okay, anyway, that was all I wanted to tell you about. Uh, we'll maybe do another video about some of the sections of the site as I get going. Okay, take care, keep safe.